for the UMass Minutemen. This should be a heck of a matchup. These two teams face each other earlier this season at the Mullen Center. It was an exciting game. And now Temple controls the tap to start things off. And the A-10's player of the year is on the board. What kind of pace do you expect? I think it's going to be frenetic. It's going to be up and down. Chance Williams is the energizer buddy, as Derek Kellogg said. I think the Temple try to play up to that speed to have to score in transition. Caddy Lane missed that shot, but then Anthony Lee missed the rebound by a wider margin. <laughs> Earl Walton, the referee. Bill McCarthy, no relation, just so you know. And Gary Prager, the other official for tonight's ball game. Good crowd on hand for these uh, quarterfinal games. I've been impressed with the crowds the first uh, couple of days of the Elite 10 tournament. Couple of missed shots and then the steal by Cummings. Little transition offense now for Temple. Scooty Randall for three. No good. Well, you see, UMass is going to get it up and down. They're very athletic. The Temple's not backing down. When they have a break, they'll take it. Last two times, they've been able to get it down quick, quickly. Freddie Riley's coming into his own as a three point shooter this year. Jesse Morgan was injured earlier this season. I know we've talked about this many times before, but it was Riley who was coming off the bench at the time, was then inserted into the starting lineup, and he's done a very nice job for Derek Kellogg's team. And you know, Tom, what's so important for Derek Kellogg is that not a, he's always been a good offensive player, but he's coming to his own defensively this year. He's not a liability on that end of the court, and subsequently he's playing a lot more minutes. See Temple's record in the quarterfinals of the Atlantic 10. Khalif Wyatt, his shot no good. Rebound by Hollis Jefferson, and then a tough pass to Scooty Randall. It's 4-3 Temple. Temple Owls have played a lot of games together, just as UMass has played a lot of games collectively over the years. That certainly helps their chemistry. Caddy Lalane going to be called for the traveling violation. Two turnovers now for UMass. Now Temple's doing a really good job of making passes to cutting guys to the basket. It's so important when somebody has the ball in their hands, you always have to be looking to move without the ball. Great pass by Hollis Jefferson. Anthony Lee in the paint. Nice move on the up and under. They need that from him. He hasn't been the, la the player that they expected the last five or six games. Well, he's got to get more consistency. And that's a nice move by the big guy. A near steal. Williams gets it out of the hands of Cummings. Temple on top by three. Early on, quarterfinal game, Atlantic 10 tournament. Caddy Lillane missed the shot, missed the second shot, missed the third shot, didn't get a fourth. Well, Caddy Lillane's got to learn when he gets the ball down low to, to take it up. That was a beautiful feed from Chaz Williams, but a dribble cost him time. You know, you'll see Chaz Williams, what he does is sets up the defense, and instead of just taking it strong to the basket, maybe a little pull-up jump shot, he has a quick dribble, but you see, but UMass is fighting strong for the rebound, not able to get the stick back. Well, now Wyatt to the free throw line. Wyatt leads the Atlantic 10 in scoring, 19.9 per game. He has scored 616 points this year. Makes the first free throw. So he has four points or three points overall. You know what's interesting? He's been very consistent. He's a four-time player of the week honoree for the A-10, but he's five-time Player of the week honoree for the Big Five. So he has had a very solid year and well worthy of that Player of the Year honor. Big Five are the schools in Philadelphia. They include Temple, of course, St. Joseph's, LaSalle, the University of Pennsylvania, and Villanova. Five point lead for Temple early on. Freddie Riley has a three and now a two. So he has all five points for UMass. He just looks more comfortable, you know. He, he's not forcing things. He's taking what the defense gives him. The guy that I think it has to be really productive in this game and stay out of foul trouble is Terrell Vincent. Yeah, Vincent and Lillane both were in foul trouble last night, and that really helped George Washington. I thought the Colonials played a wonderful game. Scooty Randall thought about the three. Instead goes up top for Cummings for three. No good. And the ball tipped out of bounds by Scooty Randall. Well, inside wasn't working, but outside has worked a couple of times for UMass. Well, and I think what Freddie Riley's doing is once he gets around Cummings, Cummings goes for, goes for the steal. Riley, instead of taking it all the way, he just has a mid-range jump shot. 
Freddie Riley from Ocala, Florida, at Vanguard High School. Last nine games, averaging just over 10 points per game. He has 196 career three-pointers, including one tonight. He got foul on that one. Wyatt hit him. You never foul the jump shooter. That's a rule. Coaches hate that. You, you don't. You go out there with their high hands, but you don't want to foul the shooter, especially when they're behind that line. Well, Wyatt called for the foul. Brings up an interesting point about Khalif Wyatt. Obviously, he's a very gifted offensive player. Defensively, he doesn't have the same kind of gifts. And I asked Fran Dunphy, <laughs> I said, politician? well, I asked Fran Dunphy, I said, so what do you want player of the year? What'd you say to him? He goes, you know, I don't really talk about the individual awards that much. The guys know that. I did, however, say to Khalif when he walked into the practice facility, I said, hey, that's Khalif Wyatt. Aren't you the defensive player of the year in the Atlantic 10? <laughs> and that was a little, you know, drive by by Fran Dunphy. But he did say he's played better defensively over the last couple of games. I had a coach that used to say that one of our, my teammates thought defense was something that went around D yard. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard that it's all defense is all effort and heart. That's why you like to see teams like St. Louis, VCU, Butler. And Temple traditionally is a very solid defensive team. That just shows how much heart they have, and that's why they're consistently in the tournament. Here's Hollis Jefferson from 15, no good. Rebound by Williams into the open floor, speeding toward the basket. Lost control, picked up by Scooty Randall. That's one of those you just like to pull up for the jump shot if you know you're not going to be able to get the, the easy bucket. Scooty Randall underneath the extra pass to Lee. It was a tough left-handed shot. He wins to share the Big Five title when they just crushed LaSalle and Raleigh Hollis Jefferson. Had a pretty big night there. You see some of the particulars on Khalif Wyatt and the Temple Owls. Chaz Williams with the ball. 15-40 to play here in the first half. Scooty Randall with the steal. Vincent's on the sideline. That'll be a turnover. You know, you look at this Temple team. They, they had some, some ups and some downs. I mean, early on they had some downs. Losing St. Bonaventure beat them at uh, the Cora Center. And then uh, losing to Duquesne. I mean, back-to-back -back two teams that didn't make this tournament. And then from finish on a 7-0 run is pretty good. So four turnovers so far for UMass. Temple with the ball on top by one. Early on here in the first half. Final quarter final of the day. St. Louis won game one. Butler won game two. And game three was won by VCU. And there was a hand in his face. There was a body in front of him. They could have caught a foul on Vincent. That's how close he was. I mean, they, they could have worn the same shorts. That was a great defensive play. <laughs> And he still fades back off one foot. Wow. Vincent does answer with a two-point field goal. Wyatt with seven points so far in the first five minutes for Temple. Hollis Jefferson fouled. A foul is on Chaz Williams. You know what? When you got a guy who knows how to score, look at this. There's about a four inch or five inch difference on in size. Look how high that brought rain. Jay Z's going to charge uh, Wyatt for the damage on the floor. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That was just so high arching. Well, that technique too is why he's able to get so many free throws. That was great recognition by Cummings. He looked to Wyatt and then passed inside to Hollis Jefferson. Beautiful looking. It's good that Jefferson is hovering around that basket. He's open. You just got to make sure you find it. Four point game, Vincent. Bucket is good, and the foul on Scooty Randall. I think it's going to be very important, as we've talked about, is Terrell Vincent's got to get involved offensively. Randall not getting over there quick enough, has some body contact. Vincent's going to go to the line for the N1. By the way, Raphael Putney, number 34, check, just checked in for UMass, so he's in for the first time. That means UMass is a little longer now with him in the game as Vincent goes to the line. Williams and Caddy Lalane chatting out toward midcourt. Putney had a great game last night. 12 points, 3 of 4 from beyond three-point range. He had one that was actually longer than Theus's in the first game. It, it, was, it was around your Reese's pieces. <laughs> you know, on the, on the court, that was a long jumper by the big guy. Maxi Escho checks in. Lelaine checks out. T.J. DeLeo just came in for Scooty Randall, who now has two fouls five and a half minutes into this game. 
Scalia is a really good defensive player. He's got a lot of offensive skills. He's a good athlete. Also a smart kid. Going for his Masters at Temple. Back to a one-point game. See Randall's numbers as he goes to the bench. Two points, two fouls. T.J. DeLeo and Scooty Randall both have gotten their degrees. They're under undergraduate degrees. Same with Jake O'Brien, who's on the bench for Temple. Hollis Jefferson left alone from 14. Uh, you got to stay with the ball handle. You never leave the ball. That time Escho left the ball. Jazz Williams picks up the loose ball. Yet to shoot the basketball. Jazz Williams is a lot like Tay Jones of St. Joseph's when it comes to his shot. He hovers, hovers, floats, and then can let it go at any point, just like there. Now that's his first bucket of the night. Yep. And a near steal. Cummings able to salvage it. I like what UMass is doing. The pressure defense is affecting Temple getting the ball court. Even though they broke the pressure, there's only 21 seconds on the shot clock. So what they're doing, in, in essence, is speeding up the game. Temple is still not in the offensive area. There was 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Here's Cummings for three off the offensive board. Whistle blows and the foul called on Anthony Lee. One point ball game, Temple on top, 15 14. Chaz Williams just got his first bucket of the night. Yeah, he's an inspiration to young kids that are small. He goes in there and just battles. I mean, I talked to Coach Jim Cruz from St. Louis a while ago, and he said there was times when he watched film where Chaz Williams' opposite hand, when he, uh, he was dribbling with, his opposite hand was on the ground when he was driving. Uh, Chaz Williams out of Bishop Ford High School, and he goes to the basket for his second bucket. Bishop Ford High School is only a couple miles away from Barkley Center. So he has a lot of friends, a lot of family who are here watching this game. So one of the great treats about coming to the Barkley Center to, per, to play in the A-10 tournament is that his grandmother, Emma, gets a chance to see him in person. That ball out of bounds, it remains UMass ball. Well, how about Putney on the block down low? You'll see Wyatt going in there. Putney just comes over and says, uh-uh, not today. Chaz Williams getting all fired up. I mean, he really wants to win this tournament. We should probably put a ticker on him. He played 40 minutes last night. He's played seven minutes, seven and a half minutes so far. As Trey Davis checks in, he was one of the stars in last night's victory over GW. You and I are watching uh, the Butler game today. Rodney Clark does not come out. He moves all the time. Yep. The smaller guys, I mean, they have stamina. They use their abilities to get the most out of it. And I'll tell you, they play a lot of minutes. Probably just lost control of that one. Left it wide open for Hollis Jefferson. Here's Lee. Mismatch. Shot blocked. Loose ball picked up by UMass. At that time, he had Chaz Williams posted up, but he saw Putney coming down. He said, hey, I'm being careful with the ball. Missed the easy layup. Cummings up the floor. Left-hand layup. Will Cummings, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Everybody around the Temple program says that he's making better decisions, making solid decisions as one of the point guards along with Khalif Wyatt. Well, that time he went right at Putney. I think it was a smart decision. Anthony Lee got position on Esho for that board. Riley defending Wyatt. And he's face guarding him. And what I mean by that, he's not worrying about the help defense as much as he's worried about denying uh, Wyatt the basketball. Jazz Williams down to the baseline. Esho fouled, count the bucket, and UMass takes the lead. A lot of times they were lackadaisical practice sometimes before the game, but they are really focused in, and it's showing in the games that they're winning this year. Esho converts the three point play. We've had five lead changes already in this ball game. The first three games today, we had two lead changes. Two. Jake O'Brien in the game for the first time. O'Brien scored a thousand points at BU. 
Now at Temple for his final year of eligibility. He can fire the three. There it goes, and it's good. You know, that's not an easy thing to do. He comes in off the bench cold and spots up. You know, I always tell kids to try to get a drive to the basket, get a little sweat going. But O'Brien is like a pro. Comes right in, drains a three ball. Davis ready the point. On the floor with Riley Putney, Lelaine, Maxi Escho, no Chaz Williams. Escho's jumper no good. Putney with the rebound. And an offensive foul called. I tell you, see Putney gets a foul called him, but O'Brien gets in the game. And you'll see right there that Caddy Lane gets mixed up on the screen, does not get out quick enough on O'Brien. And O'Brien just drills it. O'Brien double digits in seven consecutive games. That's been a huge asset for Temple. He was five of eight in the game for VCU from beyond the arc. 19 points against VCU. Temple just forced the sixth turnover of the half. However, Jake O'Brien was just called for his first personal foul. Mentioned O'Brien scored 1,000 points for Boston University. He missed a couple of years because he's had multiple surgeries on his foot. And that enabled him to get an extra year with the Temple Owls and put a big time asset. And it is. It's bench points, which are so important in this league. Carter to clean it up off the miss from Trey Davis. All right, Steve, I want you to keep track of this. That's seven. Count them seven lead changes. <laughs> By the end of the night, I want to know how many by the end of the first half and at the end of the ball game. You know what's imp incredible is that t there's only been five turnovers in this first half in the first 10 minutes. You'll see Trey Davis shoots, but there's no box out. You got to box him out. Jefferson really nowhere near Carter. Carter puts it in. Trey Davis called for the personal foul. That's his first. I was saying there's only five turnovers in this game cumulative between the two teams Temple has zero so it's been a pretty clean game so far other than your problem with the lead changes <laughs> Cummings is out Dalton Pepper the transfer from West Virginia in for Temple the Owls had a lot of success at a Pensbury High School and the boy Allen is now playing for the Philadelphia 76ers that's where Pepper went to high school in Bucks County Pennsylvania Hollis Jefferson having a little trouble out there. Wyatt covered by Williams, backs him in, spin move, and leaner doesn't get the roll. When he shoots, you're almost shocked when it doesn't go in. That's such a good touch. Butler threw an air ball up from four. Escho there with the cleanup and the putback. He's got such a quick jump. He was able to get that, put it back in quick before the defense recovered. Nice stick, stick back by Escho. Escho from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, out of Henry Wise High School. Wyatt lets one go, no good. Rebound by Escho. UMass on a little bit of a run here, up by through. Oh, Trey Davis was looking left, looked right, nobody was there, and went up and down. And he came down before he got rid of the basketball. See. Right, well, right now with UMass with a three-point lead, and the way they're playing, you try not to turn the ball over. You want to come down and get it into the offensive area. Try to get it inside to the big guys. See Scooty Randall coming right back in. All right, now Scooty's in. 8.45 to play first half with two personal fouls. It's kind of hard. Sometimes coaches just say, all right, you get two fouls, you're done for the half. And I don't believe in that. I'll tell you my biggest problem with sitting somebody down with two fouls is if you sit them down the rest of the half, they get rusty. They get, you know, yeah, you save their legs, but... I'd rather have them playing and moving around as you see Pepper hitting the, the square up jump shot at the two. I think it's a smart move getting ran it. You need his offensive input. Get him in the game and realize you taught him to be smart. They're fundamentally sound. They'll stay out of trouble. Now, if you're UMass, I like this matchup. Vincent against Dalton Pepper, and Vincent doesn't get the roll, and the tip back in by Vincent is good. And there were three white jerseys around him. Vincent is one of these, I call him the lunch pail guy. He just brings his lunch pail and he does his work.
Judy Randall from the corner, no good. Temple now two of nine from beyond the arc. Here's Davis. Williams, although he has not missed, has been very quiet. Only two points, or two, uh, two jump shots. P.J. DeLeo tried to draw the foul, but still gets the fast break layup to give Temple its 24th point of the night. They're down by one. Eight turnovers now for UMass, just one for the Owls. Jazz Williams slices through the paint. Along the baseline, traveling violation. Turnover number nine. Four to the basket. That's a beautiful play by DeLeo. All right, what about that stat we just saw? Ten field goals made, one turnover. How significant is that from a basketball standpoint? Well, I think that if you don't have those ten turnovers, you'd have more than a one-point lead in the game. But that's UMass's style. They're up and down. They have to settle down and take care of the basketball, but they're still beating Temple, and Temple's winning. Well, they have two turnovers now. They have two turnovers to go along with the ten for UMass. How about that, though? UMass has 10 field goals. They have uh, nine turnovers, excuse me. Imagine if they didn't turn it over as much, right. what their lead would be. If they're up by one, they could be up by even more. But I think what you look at UMass in a game like this, there are some nerves. This is a big game for UMass because they win this game. They get to the semifinals. You know, they get closer to, you know, being on that bubble. Chance to get in the NCAA tournament, which is their ultimate goal. There's Vincent against Pepper. Hollis Jefferson was there to help out. Vincent again backs his way in through uh, one piece of the defense. Here's Williams way downtown. He shot that one from his schoolyard at Bishop Ford High School. UMass, a lot of empty possessions. Have a lot of opportunities. As Temple has his second straight turnover. Freddie Riley from the baseline. He was hot to start. Went to the bench. O'Brien with the rebound. Wyatt and Randall are on the bench along with Anthony Lee. So off the bench, you have DeLeo, Pepper, and Jake O'Brien. This is an interesting combination that Fran Dunphy has out on the floor. And they've been playing, you know, a couple minutes with it with Wyatt on the bench. Here's DeLeo. He finally takes the three. Good! How about him? Now, you know, I don't think people understand what kind of an athlete DeLeo is. He's a great defender. Comes in, he rarely makes a mistake on the offensive end of the court, and then gives you the big three right there. He was just named to the Capital One Academic All-District Team, which includes six states and the District of Columbia. And that is turnover number 10 for UMass. So T.J. DeLeo on the floor, helping to run the point and scoring a little bit too. Well, you see, he's undersized. Caddy Lane was guarding him, just didn't come out. DeLeo nailing a three. Those are good minutes, Pepper and DeLeo coming out of the game. Well, Temple has retaken the lead by two, 27-25. They forced three turnovers in the last four possessions for UMass. See if they can capitalize here. O'Brien should be able to get more open shots now with Randall and Wyatt in the game. Ooh, Wyatt slip pass to Hollis Jefferson right back to Wyatt. Oh, a shot off the front of the rim and a foul on Cummings. Well, Chaz Williams, we mentioned what a story he is. Transfer from Hofstra, went to UMass because of DK. That's what he calls Derek Kellogg. He grew up just a couple miles away from here, Bishop Ford High School, and that's his family right there. <laughs> and they're enjoying a chance to see him in person. It's a special night. She's, uh, it's past her bedtime. It's 10 o'clock. That's his uh, daughter, Cherie. Well, in the Williams family, maybe she's 16 or 17. I'm not sure. <laughs> she's a little kid. We well, mentioned that his, he was excited to play here at Barclays Center, not only because he grew up at you know, and played high, basketball at Bishop Ford High School. But because his, his grandma, Emma, who has watched him on television, has never really seen him play college basketball in person since he went on to UMass, this was a chance for her to come and see him play here. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I loved Atlantic City, but I thought this is beautiful. I mean, the venue is great. It's walking distance to the hotels. Uh, everybody's been hospitable. Well, it's just beautiful. 
Temple. One tie, eight lead changes. Make a note of it, Steve. Largest lead, five points by Temple. Under five to play. O'Brien for three. No good. A little short. Now the rebound by Carter. Here's Jazz Williams from 19. It's good. Well, the other day when he came for practice with the Minutemen, he walked through the doors here at Barclays Center. He said, Brooklyn's in the house. Uh, the top of his lungs. And it certainly has been these last couple of days. Yeah, this, the world is his oyster. He is very, very quick. His crossover is so quick. And because he's so little and he's had to, to all of his life try to get quick shots off, He's able to do it with small areas of, of space to get open. Brad Redford from Xavier's like that. Brad always used to say that he became such a good three-point shooter because he always had to step farther back than the defense to take threes because of his size. And as it turned out, it worked to his advantage. I think that's what's more special. As you see, that's a beautiful pass by Wyatt. Wyatt, not that quick, is able to get that shot off, which is pretty unbelievable. O'Brien and Cummings both defending against Chaz Williams and the ball out of bounds off Jake O'Brien. You know what's incredible about Wyatt? You saw that beautiful pass on the last play for an easy layup. He leads the team in assists, too. I mean, it's not like he's just a scorer. Uh, I think Fran Dumpy has got it through to him that, you know, when you're a scorer, you can get guys open. Dalton Pepper back in. Randall out with two personal fouls. You like Sam Dalton Pepper, don't you? That's a great name. It's a great name. It is. O'Brien again with the block. This time, Vincent hangs on and goes out of bounds. You know what? It was funny because Vincent was getting ready to shoot it. I don't even think O'Brien blocked it. I think that he was there, and Vincent said, oh, right I'm not even going to shoot it. Right place, right time. Yeah, he didn't even shoot it. That was really good rotation by O'Brien. 4.08 to play here in the first half. Hollis Jefferson fouled by Maxi Escho with four minutes to play here in the first half. That's his first and the 16th foul. So first 35 for Temple. Jefferson having a pretty nice first half. He's two for three with four rebounds and they've been big rebounds and he's gonna get another chance to make something happen. DeLeaf Wyatt bumps along the baseline. Gary Prager made the call. And Wyatt, when we come back. As they are personality-wise, Fran Dunphy and John Cheney, they're very much similar in their coaching philosophies, which is important to keep that winning tradition at Temple. There's Lou Rowe, who was a fabulous player, who, as we've seen during the course of this year, when they have shoot-around and they have to take half-court shots, he's still ready to take them. I said, you can still shoot, right? He goes, oh, I can still shoot. I love his tie, too. I have to wear my pink tie tomorrow. No green tomorrow. Day before St. Patrick's Day in Brooklyn. I don't know about that. 31-29, 10 lead changes so far in this first half. 3.50 to play. 11 field goals, 11 turnovers. I think that's the surprising thing, 11 turnovers for UMass. Wouldn't you agree? And they're still in the game. I mean, arguably they should be up. Williams, nice sidestep, and even over the top of the tip by Anthony Lee, it goes down. I mean, you're talking 5-7 again against 6-9. That's crazy. That's just crazy, 6-10. I mean, that's, that's a big, big guy that he went up and over. 31 all, 325 left to play first half. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow belongs to UMass. All eight players Temple has used, including DeLeo and Hollis Jefferson, have scored, and Hollis Jefferson adds to its total. I think Hollis Jefferson is the X factor right now in this game. You know, not only is he scoring, but he's also rebounding the basketball, playing solid defense. That show misses the shot. Vincent and Pepper battle it, and it's off Dalton Pepper. Now Chaz Williams gets through the lane. He's so very, very quick that he's also able to get up and over. See how quick he gets that, and right over Putney. I mean, right, I'm sorry, right over Lee. And then you see Hollis Jefferson just 
adding to his total. He's three for four, six points, four rebounds in the early going. Foul on Dalton Pepper. Caddy Lalane had the ball facing the basket. That's his first and the 18 foul. So some free throws coming for the Minutemen. Wyatt will check back into the ball game. Wyatt comes back in with nine points. Now the lane scoreless so far. 0 for 4 from the floor. And he makes the first free throw. Gary Prager having a chat with uh, Terrell Vincent. We told him not to grab him on yeah. the rebound. He said, it, and Vincent looked at him like you're crazy. And he says, hey, listen, I'm just trying to help you out. <laughs> Makes the second free throw. Of course, that was part of what happened yesterday in that Charlotte game. It was a dead ball foul, and that's why it resulted in a technical foul on Derek Williams, whether you agree with the call or not. I was talking to the director of officials for the A-10, Andrew Greenwood, and he said that uh, said that Digger Phelps gave him a, a whole lot of looking at. He said that somebody <laughs> said, uh, how good of a coach was he? He's a really good coach. He was, well, how good of a referee was he? Reggie goes, he's a really good coach. 36 <laughs> <laughs> 33, thanks to the three by DeLeo. DeLeo at eight points so far, three assists off the bench in this first half. See, now what happens with Jefferson playing as well as he is, you have to guard him. He well, there is, he is, he is for 15. Good, doing a super job. So they have to guard him, which leaves Lee down low open. And also, you got to guard Wyatt. It's, it's, a it's a tough gig right now for UMass. 149 to play. Temple with a five point lead and a timeout called. Hollis Jefferson directing a little traffic here, and then finding a little sliver of daylight. You know, it's man to man coverage, and Jefferson's got the hot touch. He's got the hot touch, but credit T.J. DeLeo coming off the bench. You mentioned Jake O'Brien. It's tough to come off the bench and, and make some shots. Well, for T.J. DeLeo, he's not considered a scorer. But what he does and what I like is that he starts on the defensive end, and he gets the sweat going, he gets the juices flowing, then he comes down, and he's able to hit that open jump shot. But everything DeLeo does basically comes from the defense. He's a very good athlete. Temple now on a 7-2 run. In the last minute 19. So 38-33 the score. Temple's had a uh, a lush history in the Atlantic 10. They've won nine titles. Now this is technically their final season in the Atlantic 10 because they'll move on to the Big East after this. Their first appearance was 1983. Fran Dunphy himself has won three tournament titles. Here's DeLeo off the bench. You see his numbers. And Jefferson's done such a good job defensively on Riley. Riley started off really hot, but hasn't done anything in the last 15 minutes. Yeah. Traveling violation, turnover number 12 for UMass. Freddie Riley started off with the first five points. He's only got seven on the game. And you gotta look at the defense being played by Temple. That show back in the ball game. Leading score for UMass, Chaz Williams with 10. Leading score for Temple, Khalif Wyatt with nine. And DeLeo and Hollis Jefferson with eight. Hollis Jefferson finds Cummings in the corner. And Cummings stumbles into a turnover. One minute to play in the first half. Williams to the basket, and he draws the foul, so he'll get two free throws. Anytime Chaz Williams goes in the lane, you watch it. He's got great body control, but he ends up on the ground. This is a guy that takes a lot of blows to the body, and he's not afraid to go in amongst the trees. So is it a big deal that he played 40 minutes last night and now has played just about every minute of this first half? I mean, oh, does sure. a guy like that tire at all? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, I don't care who you are. You know, you get tired. 
you get fatigued, especially when you're coming home. I think emotionally he was fatigued in the first five minutes of the game last night. And then he calmed down and got it back. But he realizes that this is an opportunity that he may not have again. You know, you get to the semifinals and be on national TV. Came into this ball game as one of the top scorers in the 8-10. Top ball handler as well. And he makes both free throws. So he has 12 points. He's been very efficient. 4-7. He's got two assists to go along with 4 for 4 from the free throw line. A 20-second differential on the shot clock. So UMass will get a shot at the end of the half. Wyatt turns the ball over. Here's Williams to Freddie Riley. Gets past to Leo to give it up to Davis to lay it in. That was a great play by Riley. Unselfish play to get the easy basket. UMass within one. So now Temple uses the top. DK has done a great job turning UMass around again. So Temple will hold it for one last shot. They certainly don't want Hollis Jefferson to, to run the point. Eight seconds, now seven seconds. Wyatt with the ball, covered by Riley. Four seconds. Wyatt leads it to the corner for Randall to let it go. No good. And that is the end of the first half. Temple hangs on to a one-point lead despite the efforts of Chad. Earl Walton's going to hand the basketball to Samson Carter. We're ready to go. UMass will have the ball to begin the second half. Down by one. Let's see if they can control the ball. A little bit more. They turned the ball over 12 times, the most in a first half this entire year. Final quarter, final of the day. We've had three games already. This is number four, and Chaz Williams looks like he belongs. You know, that's the first time Chaz Williams has shot a three-point jump shot where he got Arch under, underneath the ball. The ball was up in the air, and he's going to pick the pocket of Scooty Randall. Scooty Randall is going to be called for that foul. That'll be his third personal foul. By the way, you're right, Steve. They, they did rule that 8-3, not a 2. Originally, it was scored a 2 by one official, changed to a 3 by another. So 40 to 38 the score. Man, getting Scooty Randall to get that third foul is, uh, is also big. Yeah, he remains in the ball game right now with three personal fouls. They really need to have uh, Wyatt Cummings bringing the ball court as opposed to Randall. Guys, Williams just circling around underneath. He tried to bounce past to Vincent. Wyatt looking for some contact, leaves it down low to Hollis Jefferson. Scooty Randall got a step on Vincent. Into a little bit of traffic down there. Patty Lillane knocked it out of bounds, so it remains Temple Ball. 25 on the shot clock. UMass came out of the tunnel with energy. Now Temple has to match that energy. Chaz Williams is the energizer bunny, and he's the guy that makes this team go. You can see how intense he is. Shot clock under 10. Wyatt calling for the best boy. He's got Chaz Williams on. Cummings would have let it go. Shot clock's at two. He did let it go, and it's tipped. Anthony Lee picks up the loose ball, and Chaz Williams called for his second personal foul. Oh boy, Chance Williams was so upset with that call. I tell you, he he's a fiery kid. Temple didn't do a very good job of managing the shot clock that last time down. Randall misses the the seven footer. Now UMass can add to its lead. They'll take a three Riley from the corner. It's good. Derek Kellogg imploring his team to pick up full court. He wants them to have pressure. Largest lead of the game. UMass on top by five. Here's Wyatt. Good defense by Carter on Wyatt. Really closing out quickly on him. Scooty Randall covered by Chaz Williams. Randall open for three, trying to answer, and does. That's big because Randall has to open up his offensive game. He's going to have to be a factor because right now, Wyatt 
is not able to get open jump shots. Good defense by UMass is shutting down. Somebody's got to pick up the pace, and that's a big shot by Randall. Patty relayed with the offensive board, and he's bumped from behind by, I believe, Scooty Randall. Let's see who they call it against. It is Scooty Randall. That's another foul. That's number four. Oh, they're going to call Lee on that. Oh, they're going to call it on Lee, Anthony Lee. But it, That's Lee. the Riley bucket we're looking at right there. And then the answer by Scooty Randall for three. Well, that's a fortunate foul right there for Temple as Jazz Williams goes right out over the top of Will Cummings. Now Williams with 18. He has just come out of the gate going crazy. Williams with 15. Well, good defense by UMass and Wyatt draws the foul and he'll go to the free throw line for two. Well, I'll tell you, when they overplay it, Wyatt is being overplayed as something fierce. You'll see Wyatt, Wyatt will go back door right here. See, dribble penetration, ball fake, Wyatt goes back. Foul on the lane. And that's what you have to do, Tom. And when you're overplayed and they're denying that pass, you have to make sure you cut to the basket. Wyatt double digits once again for Temple. He has 16 20 point games so far this year. He has five 30 point games. He has made with that free throw right there 184 free throws on the season which is five away from the record for a year for a Temple basketball player. It's a nice tip out by Randall couldn't grab it so he tipped it out on the missed free throw giving Temple another possession and Randall another shot and another three. Now that is really important because now you can't put all your attention on Wyatt. You need to have another score whether it's an inside score or an outside score. Randall's coming to play in the second half, and they're going to get Lee for another foul. Well, Scooty Randall has made back-to-back three-pointers for Temple. Getting in a little rhythm here. You know, that's a dribble handoff and a little bit of a pick by Hollis Jefferson, leaving Randall wide open. So now it's 16.42 to play in the second half. Lane to the free throw line. Two for two so far tonight. Two for three, just barely hit the net, and as soon as he released it, you heard him yell, no. <laughs> Scooty Randall, big time here in the second half. He had two points in the first half. He has six points in the first three minutes of the second. Putney in, laying out. Putney gives him a little more size, but he also gives him the perimeter shooting, too. I just love watching Chaz Williams' facial expressions. I mean, he, whatever it is, he's always, he's always talking. He's always making faces at the referees, the other players, the coaches. <laughs> he's fun to watch. Wyatt picked up by Vincent, shot clock down to seven. Wyatt bumped along the perimeter. And I tell you, Wyatt sometimes gets these, sometimes he doesn't. But you'll see when he drives to the basket, if somebody's touching him, he has that head fake. Now watch the head fake. As soon as he gets around him and there's a grab, watch his head. Boom. That's when the <laughs> officials say, I wonder if he got fouled. And that can go both ways. Sometimes officials say, I, you know, quit faking it, quit acting. Well, there's a three, no good. Rebound by Hollis Jefferson. O'Brien's trying to post up down low against Vincent. Cummings leaves it for O'Brien. He's not the alley-oop kind of guy. Shot is blocked. Well, you know what? Three guys came down on him. When there's three guys on you, Randall was wide open for a, a step-in three-pointer. Here's Williams for three, no good. He was trying to draw the foul. 
And Williams is able to get his hand up and deflect that pass. He, he just sensed something was going he on. He didn't even see it. Nope. Thomas was right in front of us. He wasn't looking anywhere near the ball. I don't he know how he was able to do that. He was like a defensive back reading the eyes of the receiver. Neither team pulling away from the other. UMass 12 turnovers in the first half. They've committed just one here in the second half. Wyatt doing a nice job on Riley. Here's Riley for three. His feet were in set. He grazed the foot of the rim. Here's Cummings to the basket. Bounce shot no good. Somebody get the lid off the cylinder for both these teams. There you go. Carter rips it off. That was a good pass ahead. Carter in stride catches it and throws it down. UMass playing their game, getting up and down the court. So now a four-point lead for UMass. Wyatt is trying to draw the foul. Here's Cummings. Shot clock does not reset. No change in possession. Here's Randall to the basket. Finger roll. Got the roll off the side of the rim of the backboard. And that's a smart play, Tom. He has hit two straight threes, so the defense comes out on him. He pump fakes and drives and gets an easy two inside. Vincent has it stripped, got it back, and then the touch off the glass to make it a 51-47 game. Six minutes into the second half for an opportunity to go out of the semifinal, the Atlantic 10 tournament. That's right there, when Wyatt comes to the top of the key, Riley is face guarding him. That's when uh, Wyatt's got to go back door because it's wide open. Drake O'Brien with a little fadeaway jumper over the top of Carter. Got a pretty touch for a big fellow. Reminds me a little bit of Rob Lowe from St. Louis. O'Brien now with seven points off the bench for Temple. There you go, three and six on the floor. It's almost as if UMass is trying to lull Temple to sleep here with Williams. The ball stolen away. Hollis Jefferson got a hand on it. Cummings helped out. Transition offense for Temple. A foul going up. Vincent called for the personal foul. That's just some pretty gaudy numbers. It's also a pretty gaudy mustache for Fran Dunphy, who he no, he no longer has that mustache. He shaved it when Deontay Christmas came back to graduate from Temple. That was just an excuse to get rid of it. Well, his it wife has be probably it. been in his grill about it. Mustaches are gone. Fred Duffy also a very accomplished uh, amateur golfer. He won his club championship this past year. I congratulated him on that and he said, well, the guys that were playing really had tough days. They were wonderful golfers. and I'm nowhere near in their class whatsoever. 53-51 the score. The bucket made by the Minutemen to give them a two-point lead. 12-40 and counting to play here in the second half. Leo back in the game. He had a nice first half and really kept Temple ahead. With eight first-hand points with some solid defense. The bench has been big for Temple. 17 first half or 17 points so far in the game. Hollis Jefferson gets the continuation. Welcome to the NBA, boys. And he's one of the guys that had a solid first half. Hollis Jefferson, 10 points on five of six shooting with six rebounds. You'll see the pass from Delio to Hollis Jefferson. He stays with it, uses the glass, and puts it through. That's, that's, that's called sticking with it. Well, what a night for Hollis Jefferson, 6.7 rebounds. I was talking to Fran Dunphy about his night against LaSalle. And I said, Would, do you wish that you can get something like that again from Raleigh Hollis Jefferson? He said, Tom, he can take, he can play in 3,000 basketball games for the rest of his career, and he will never have a game like he had against LaSalle. And there is some truth to that. His free throw gives Temple the lead, 54-53. And now the air ball by Maxi Escho gives the Owls the ball back, and Scooty Randall's going to check back into the game. Well, you know, Hollis Jefferson, I mean, there's still 12 minutes left, and he is really close to a triple-double. And I would say that's a pretty solid game. Particularly for a big man to have six assists right now. He's done a nice job in the pressure. Let's go, 
Wyatt took that with one hand. If he would take it two hands, he'd probably be out foul. Wyatt with the rebound. Got Gives it off to Randall. They have numbers. Hollis Jefferson will go to the free throw line after the block. So Temple with a one here this evening. Well, he'll go to the free throw line. And he makes the first of two. Both teams have had a large lead of five so far tonight. It's now a three-point lead. Temple on top, 56-53. It's a 9-2 Temple run with 11 and a half to play in the second half. And that's going to be a legal screen by Putney. You can't move. Putney is just not big enough sometimes. You have to make sure as a guard that you rub your man off. At that point in time, Chaz Williams came a little bit too far out. The defender was able to get through, so Putney tried to cut him off. That's as much the guard's fault as it is the big guy setting the pick. So Max Asio checks back in. Putney checks out. Temple's going to be shooting for the rest of the half. That's 17 fouls for UMass. A 9-2 run. Oh boy, why got a little out of control with that. Kind of understood what he was trying to do. He was trying to break his way through the double team, and if it wasn't there, he'd pass it off, and the angle just wasn't there for him. Yeah, I, what I just saw right there, I really like. Leo and, and Hollis Jefferson looked at him and said, hey, don't worry about it. And he goes, I got it. I'm fine. Wyatt is their leader. He's struggling. Other guys will pick it up. But you need him at the end of the game. And I like that teamwork. With his fellow teammates coming over and saying something to him. Vincent against Hollis Jefferson. And the rebound by Hollis Jefferson. That's number seven for him. The rebounds, he may be able to get double digits. The assist, it may not happen. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Jake O'Brien. And Fran chatting with uh, Bill McCarthy, one of the officials for tonight's ball game. Earl Walton's going to go over and take a look at that just to see if there was any kind of uh, elbows back and forth. They're going to take a look at it right now. I like Fran's tie, but I think I like mine better. I might have to sell it back to him, but you'll see. <laughs> I don't think there's. Well, the arm went up, it and is. it's the interpretation of the rule. See, right there, the arm went up. Vincent went to the floor. I think Vincent did a little acting as he went down to the floor. I, I, see, I just think they're going to call it a flagrant. I think they might call it a flagrant. You know, I think when you go, you know, obviously the referees are watching your hands. But guys, big guys go down there and they establish position with their arms. That, you know, you need to do it with your lower body. That's, the referees aren't looking at your lower body. They're looking at your arms. All right, so they're not going to call. No, they're, they're not going to call any kind of flagrant I think, I, foul. I think that's it. the right call, Just too. Just a foul. 56-53 the score. 10.35 to play, second half. Kaz Williams with 18 points on 6 of 10 shooting. Here's Freddie Riley covered up top by Dalton Pepper. Riley lets it go way downtown. No good. Got an easy offensive rebound by Carter, who's fouled going back up. I, I'm not sure if Riley saw this, but Carter was wide open under the basket, and Riley shot that pretty quickly. And you'll see right here, Carter underneath the basket, nobody there to box him out. So, you know, if I'm Riley and I see that, I go for that three ball. Well, now Carter goes to the line. By the way, the foul on Jake O'Brien, his third. UMass is a team, fourth in the Atlantic 10 in free throw shooting at 72%. Part of that is because of the success of Jazz Williams. Dalton Pepper was in for a moment. Now he's back out. Scooty Randall comes back in. And here's Carter's second shot. And it's good. So it's back to a one-point game. Hollis Jefferson dribbled himself open. Shot no good. Scooty Randall, right place, right time. Off the, the loose ball. Samson Carter 
got caught into the basket and was able to get, it, get that. You're going to see a turnover by UMass stepping on the end by lines. You'll see right here, Samson Carter goes too far in and loses it. Right place at the right time. All right, so a little full car pressure by UMass. That's you know, what they're known for. Now they pull back a little bit. Have they been as frenetic as you expected as far as their full court pressure goes? No, and I think that that's a lot to do with the way Temple plays. You have, you have to always be cognizant of what Temple's trying to do. Just Fred Duffy's such a great coach. Hollis Jefferson off the miss by Jake O'Brien lays it in. And that's a rebound and two points for Jefferson, giving him 15 that they get five guys, five teams in, and UMass being one of them. Hey, you wonder if UMass had, had defeated Miami earlier this year, if that may have changed their, their resume a little bit. 60 to 55 to score, nine and a half to play. Galeo now on Chaz Williams, denying him the ball. Dalton Pepper back in the game. He's on Maxi Escho. Vincent goes to the basket and draws the foul. Anthony leaves. Had some foul trouble. If it's against him, that's number four. He's really been a non-factor. He's got more fouls than he has points. He's only played about 15 minutes. But you know, the good news is that other guys have picked it up. Uh, DeLeo picked it up, Pepper, O'Brien, and especially Hollis Jefferson. Anthony Lee was in foul trouble against VCU at the end of the regular season. He played only 12 minutes in that ball game, so it's very similar to this one. He's out. Randall's in. O'Brien's in for Dalton Pepper. Vincent with 10 points, four rebounds so far. And the second shot is good. Now uh, both teams will be shooting for the rest of the half. Temple with 16 fouls, UMass with seven. But the possession arrow belongs to the Owls. Here's DeLeo. Over to O'Brien. They try to get him open for a jumper. Really good ball movement. Take a little time off the clock, but that's very good ball movement. Seven on the shot clock right now. They have to get in that offensive area. Shot clock at three, now at two. Wyatt lets it fly, no good. And the rebound by Chaz Williams. He saved it on the baseline. And then he'll get it right back. It was not a good possession by Temple. Fade away three by Wyatt. Wyatt has really struggled here. Two of 11 from the field. One of six from behind the arc. He has 10 points, but five of those points have come from the free throw line. Vincent. Cut off on the double team. Now Riley. Well, that turned out to be a tougher shot than he wanted. Randall with the rebound. Here's Wyatt. He's missed eight straight shots. That's a little easier. Make it nine straight. Well, he's one of six from behind the arc, but that one was pretty. Charles <laughs> <laughs> Williams just lost control of that ball. Temple getting it up and down now a little bit. Williams may have hurt himself. He's back. He's just walking off a little bit of pain, adjusting his sneakers. Wyatt has that shot partially blocked. O'Brien with the rebound. Back to Wyatt. He'll take another one. So he's now missed 11 straight shots. That's unlike him. But he'll keep on shooting because that's what scores do. Yeah. I think, At least that's what I'm told, Scores. Well, you know the old adage, it's uh, shoot till you get hot, shoot till you get cold. Well, he's got the cold part down. <laughs> Earlier this week, he said, listen, anybody can win the Atlantic 10 Conference. In fact, I think St. Bonaventure could have won the Atlantic 10 Conference if they had gotten in. Jazz Williams, little entry pass to Vincent. Covered by Hollis Jefferson. They'll call a foul on Hollis Jefferson. That was all about the aggressiveness of Terrell Vincent. And I'll tell you, Vincent does a super job getting to the basket. You got to give credit to Temple. They've been able to do a pretty good job defending him. Double bonus now for both teams on the next foul. And Vincent's only had six attempts at the basket. Now he's three of five from the free throw line.
Second shot was good, so he missed one, made one. It's a two-point ball game. As show in, Vincent out. Riley on Wyatt. See what Wyatt does here. Oh, nice hesitation. Teardrop, no good. It rimmed out. That's Joe with the rebound. He had it. That was a nice move to the basket. Good head and shoulder fake. Yeah, they talk about creating shots, creating your own shot, and that's exactly what Wyatt was able to do. He just wasn't able to finish the shot. Now, Williams, on the other hand, has been able to finish shots tonight. And right now, if you're UMass, you want to get a good shot. You don't have to rush. you got the lead. You're going to have to play. And a timeout call by UMass. It's yeah, the first semifinal tomorrow, it's a good one. It's a rematch of a game earlier this year, St. Louis and Butler. And then the winner of this one takes on VCU. Williams lost control for a moment. Shot clock at five. Vincent lets it go. No good. Rebound by Cummings. Good box by O'Brien pushing Lane under yeah. the basket so that Cummings can get that rebound. Wyatt, O'Brien, Hollis Jefferson, Randall, and Cummings. Here's O'Brien, open for three, no good. And the rebound tipped by Hollis Jefferson to Chaz Williams. Two minutes to play in the second half. Temple has missed seven consecutive three-pointers, including that last one by O'Brien. And their shooting percentage is now dipped under 40%. Carter lost control. Hollis Jefferson had it for a moment. Picked back up. Riley for three. Good! How big was that play? Hollis Jefferson had it in his hand. Good defensive play. Getting it back. Riley with a wide open three ball. Hollis Jefferson pinballs it. Do not defend the ball. They have Randall away from the ball. He'll defend the cutter trying to get the ball. They're trying to shield Chaz Williams from getting the basketball. And a timeout called by Derek Kellogg. Samson. Go crazy, look for Vincent to get the ball as an outlet. I think they also reminded Vincent that he could run the baseline, which is what he did there, which helped find Chaz Williams. And the foul on Will Cummings. I think everybody on the Temple side of the floor thought that was a clean pick. You know, even, it, it's, it's a pretty good foul. Even if it was a clean pick, we'll see here. They're going to call that. Yeah, that looks, wow. That's pretty clean. <laughs> they could have let that go. They could have let that go. Cummings now with three fouls. Williams, perfect from the free throw line. Still nine for nine, 27 points. That ties his season high. Vincent out, that show back in. Two possession game. This free throw doesn't mean a whole lot. UMass now with a little bit more pressure. And you'll see Riley just face guarding Wyatt, not worrying about anybody other than Wyatt. He's in his face, trying to deny the ball. Under a minute to play. Wyatt trying to find an opening. Does! Wyatt, nine of the last 11 points. Crunch time. All right, 55.6 to play. They're trying to find Chaz Williams. Carter is floating along the baseline. A tie-up. Whistle blows. Timeout. And a timeout called by UMass. The call, a jump ball. Oh, no, wait. I'm not sure what Gary Frager called there. Unless they said that he was too close to the, to the baseline on the inbounds. And now Earl Walton is going to come over and talk to Gary Prager. Yeah, he was too close to the baseline. Good call, T-Mac. I was just deducing more than anything else. I thought it was a timeout at first. They get it into Vincent. He's double teamed in the corner. Nice job. They get it now to Samson Carter. Plenty of time to get it across midcourt. Ooh, almost lost by Williams. They run some time. No need to foul if you're unit or if you're Temple. That's what Fran Dunphy's telling no him right need. now. Just no play good defense. Foul. Shot clock is down to 14. She just want to make sure they don't score. 
Shot clock at seven. Vincent. Oh, no, that's a game. Still time, but that's a tough shot. Here's Wyatt tries to draw the foul. No good. Ball is loose. Picked up by UMass. The foul called, and the Minutemen will go to the line. Up. Throw line. Going to the line for two. Eight for nine. That's big time. And it's the largest lead of the night for the Minutemen. Bubble teams everywhere wondering what's going to go on. Still a two possession ball game. Wyatt up the floor, covered by Riley. To Cummings for three. Good! Out. Temple doesn't have any timeouts left. This rubber. Here's Riley. Now the lane. Bang! And that will do it. UMass will advance to the semifinal for a rematch against VCU as they upset the Temple Owl 79 to 74.